Welcome. My name is Dr. Nick Hunter. I work here at Preferred Physical Therapy where we help people 40 plus stay active and independent, live free from painkillers and avoid surgery even if they've had pain for years. And today we're talking about three tips, three ways you can help prevent hip bursitis. And again, we've gone over some of those definitions of what hip bursitis is, what bursa sacs are, what the itis part of bursitis means, why it's inflammatory, how those things get irritated, and what other structures are commonly involved with this. If you're not sure of what I'm talking about, check out our Technique Tuesday video that's released today. Now, here are three tips that I commonly talk to my patients about to help them prevent this from coming back. And the first one is sitting cross-legged. A lot of, it's very common in ladies, uh, but a lot of ladies will sit cross-legged because there's it, supposed to it's common culture the issue with that is because legs are crossed we actually get this low load passive stretch across this IT band and outer hip structure while we're in, in already a kind of a flexed or stretched position and so we're we're just incorporating more pressure over that bursa sac and ladies will sit there for 20 30 45 minutes at a time before they move not only is it a challenge to veins and, and vascular systems of the lower leg, but it also affects that hip bursitis and aspects IT band and along the outer hip area. So try and not sit any longer than five minutes um, in a cross-legged, you know, legs, uh, knee across knee position. The other thing that you want to do is make sure in your fitness program you include specific glute strengthening exercises, particularly in glute med and minimus. Uh, what they help do is they help level the pelvis. So as we're walking, we don't want to get pelvic dipping or pelvic rocking. Commonly what will happen is we'll get pelvic elevation. We might have to hip hike, we call that, as we walk, and that's a sign of, of weakness. And so we're trying to get as much glute strength and specific glute strength into that program. And so some clamshells, some sideline leg lifts, some side planks, uh, banded exercises around the knee, helping to push the knees out, uh, are all good starts to incorporate uh, some glute strength, as well as classic bridges. There's a lot of aspects included uh, involved in those exercises to make them the most productive, the most efficient, and purposeful behind avoiding getting hip bursitis. And so if you have any of those questions, look at our YouTube channel. We've got a lot of videos, educational series, on how to do those exercises appropriately. The last thing that you should include to help prevent this from coming back is a specific or targeted hip flexibility program. Now when I say flexibility, a lot of people just think stretching, and that's an aspect, a component of flexibility. The other thing is, is capsular or what we typically call um, non-stretchy or, or more rigid-like tissues that need to be moved. Now obviously we can't stretch or pull apart these tissues, think more like fascia or joint capsule. What we want to be able to do is, is mobilize and move or floss those structures in their arrangement or in their place so that they don't get adherent or sticky or stuck, causing reduced, uh, reductions in flexibility. So we do want to stretch muscles. We do want to do pigeon stretch, hamstring stretches, some glute med min piriformis type stretches uh, to help that posterior hip or the back side of the hip glute musculature to stretch and to reduce any tension that's that's built up there typically from sitting long periods of time but we also want to do some some joint mobilizations some joint stretches also some IT band flossing type exercises so that we can mobilize those more rigid structures and help them to stay free and clear without the actual ability to pull apart we want to more floss or glide along the tracks that they're in. So those are three tips we can give you to help reduce or prevent any hip bursitis complications or hip bursitis symptoms from starting or coming back. Hope those help. If you have any more questions, feel free to check us out on YouTube. We have a lot of educational videos there, as well as our Facebook page where we have lots of discussions of ways that you can stay active and independent, live free from pain, and avoid surgery.